Coach O has become one of everybody's favorite coaches in college football, and it may be because of his accent, his story, or his championship ring, but honestly, it's probably a mix of everything. I personally love Coach O, but outside of his 2019 season, has he been that good, and does the question need to be asked? Is Ed Orgeron an elite coach, or is he overrated? Today, we're going to talk about the rise of Coach Orgeron, his time at LSU, and we will examine if the hype is warranted, or if he is overrated. I'm excited to get into this, but before we do, be sure to give the video a like if you want to support the channel, subscribe if you love college football content, suggest what topic I should do next, and be sure to turn on post notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now let's get started and talk about Coach O. I've been having hood dreams, ball player, rap star, Billy Ben Tank, BMW, I ain't got no black, call it dog ladies, two twin blocks and make them shake it like a saw shake, ain't make it to the league, but I'm still falling, I was born for this, never thought I'd see the day when I could make it, should I go legit? Going back in time, Coach O played in the 1977 Louisiana Class 4A state championship game in high school, and he'd play one year at LSU in 1979. He would transfer after one year to Northwestern State, which is an FCS school, and he would play three more seasons there. He graduated in 1983 from Northwestern State and got hired to be a graduate assistant there in 1984. The next year, he went on to be a graduate assistant at McNeese State, and then he was an assistant strength coach at Arkansas for two years. He'd finally get his first big break in 1998 when he was hired to be Miami's defensive line coach. He would coach four seasons for the Hurricanes, and several of his defensive linemen would go on to have great NFL careers such as Cortez Kennedy, Russell Maryland, and Warren Sapp. In his four years there, Coach O also won two national championships with the Hurricanes. Sadly, he would have some off-the-field personal issues, though, as he was arrested in July of 1992 for getting in a fight at a Baton Rouge bar. Following his arrest, he would take a leave of absence from the Miami coaching staff, saying, quote, Yes, my dismissal was necessary, but it led to a turnaround in my lifestyle. That's something that had to be done with my life, and where I could just feel comfortable with what I'm doing today. After living with his parents for a year and the charges were dropped, Orgeron would begin to get his life back on track. He credited his father for helping turn his life around, and in 1994, he would return to coaching as a volunteer linebackers coach at Nichols State. The following year, he would get another big break by getting hired to be the new defensive line coach at Syracuse. Coach O credits his off-field development to Syracuse's head coach at the time. He also thanked him for giving him a second chance at major college football coaching and improving his image after all those personal issues he had. After three years with the Orange, Ordrum would go to the opposite side of the country, and he accepted the defensive line coaching job at USC for the newly hired head coach Paul Hackett. Unfortunately, Hackett was not the answer for the USC program, as he went 19-18 and 18 in his first three years before he was gone. He was fired in 2000, and Orgeron was one of the few coaches kept on staff by incoming new head coach Pete Carroll. They actually had met a long time ago, as they had met at a high school game and had connected over their love for recruiting, so Carroll really liked him. Coach O would climb the ladder at USC over the next few years, and in 2001, he would take on the additional job of being the recruiting coordinator, and in 2003, he'd be bumped up to an assistant head coach. During his time with Pete Carroll, he'd add two more national championships to his resume in 2003 and 2004, and he was starting to become a bigger name coach. Along with him winning the 2004 national title, Coach O was also the 2004 National Recruiter of the Year. Since he did such a good job, Ole Miss decided to hire him in 2004, and he tried to bring Lane Kiffin with him over to Ole Miss too, but Lane decided to stay in California at USC. In his first year as head coach, he wanted to bring a similar offense as USC did to Ole Miss, but unfortunately the offense did not catch a break as they ranked 111th in the country and ended with a 3-8 record. After the 2005 season, 3-8 was the worst record since 1987, and he would fire his offensive coordinator Noah Malzone. And to replace them, he would hire two former Miami coaches. He hired Dan Werner as the offensive coordinator and Art Kehoe as the offensive line coach, the two coaches did not help much in 2006, though, as the Rebels' offense only improved from 111th to 108th, and this was not good. The only bright spot of the 2006 season was that he signed the 15th-ranked recruiting class, and that included some notable names such as Dexter McCluster and Greg Hardy. Despite the poor start, Coach O still had support from the university, and the athletic director said, quote, I think Coach Orgeron inherited a very difficult situation. I am 100% behind him, and I think that people ought to understand he has a big challenge ahead. The next year in 2007, Ole Miss would go 0-8 in the SEC and 3-9 overall, and this was their first time going winless in the conference since 1982, and that is when they had enough. In their final game of the year against in-state rival Mississippi State, Ole Miss would blow a 14-point lead, causing Coach O to be fired shortly after. 
This was really tough for him, but he would have another chance to coach as he was hired by the New Orleans Saints to be their defensive line coach. 2009, he would return to college football as he would accept a job at Tennessee as he would join Lane Kiffin during his first year there. During his one season, he was the associate head coach, the defensive line coach, and the recruiting coordinator for the Volunteers. After Lane Kiffin left without notice and caused riots to join USC, Orgeron would follow him to become USC's assistant head coach there. During the 2013 season, USC would get off to a 3-2 start, making Lane Kiffin 4-7 in his last 11 games as a head coach. In 2013, USC fired Lane Kiffin after their loss to Arizona State, and Orgeron would be the interim head coach for the rest of the season. Coach O would turn the season around, winning six of their last eight games, while also getting USC to the Las Vegas Bowl. His great season also included an upset win over rival Stanford, who was ranked number five at the time. Despite all the success in the 2013 season, it would end in controversy. A couple weeks before their bowl game against Fresno State, USC announced to be hiring Washington head coach Steve Sarkeesian to be the next guy. Orgeron was very upset, and rightfully so, that he was not offered the head coaching job. He would turn down USC's offer to continue as their assistant head coach, and he resigned from the program. His resignation also meant he'd be skipping the Las Vegas Bowl against Fresno State, so he'd have their third head coach in one year, and that was Clay Helton. Shortly after the resignation, he would put out a statement saying, quote, I am grateful to the University of Southern California for the great time I had here. I'm especially grateful for the players on this year's team, the coaching staff, and the Trojan family for the way they all fought through adversity and became one. I'm also thankful for all the Trojan players and family members who have become close friends over the years. I'm especially proud of this year's team and coaching staff who had to start a new season and then bond together. After taking a year off, Coach O was ready to get back to the coaching market, stating that he was full of fire and ready to go again. He would take a job in 2015 as, as LSU's defensive line coach, and in 2016, LSU would start out really slow, and that would cause head coach Les Miles to be fired. Mirroring his 2013 season in USC, Coach Ordron would be named the interim head coach again, and he would turn LSU's season around with a record of 5-2. And, and his first game coaching was, of course, against my Missouri Tigers. During his interim season, Ordron would flip the script in his own words, and he promoted his tight ends coached offensive coordinator and backed longtime LSU defensive coordinator Pete Jenkins. Coach O also brought in a practice schedule he learned from Pete Carroll, and each day they'd have a theme such as Competition Tuesday and Focus Friday. Coach O also decided to shorten practice length and spend more time in the film room in order to keep his players more refreshed. LSU finished the regular season with a huge win over Texas A&M, which would give them a bowl bid. While waiting to see if they'd get a bowl game, LSU was finding another coach, and they tried to get Jimbo Fisher and Tom Herman. Not wanting to make the same mistake USC did though, they ultimately decided to erase intern from his title and named Ed Orgeron the head coach of Louisiana State. They'd end the season with a Citrus Bowl victory over Louisville and Coach O was really happy. 2017 would be Coach O's first full year as LSU's head coach and after a massive upset at home over Troy and after they got upset by Troy earlier in the year, they would win 6 of their last 7 games and go to the Citrus Bowl where they would lose to Notre Dame. 2018 would prove to be pivotal for the Tigers as they started the year with two early wins over both Miami and Auburn, bringing LSU to be ranked as high as number 5. The rest of LSU season was honestly a roller coaster, which had a heartbreaking loss to Florida, followed by a huge upset over number 2 Georgia. In a game that was a really big deal, they would lose to number 1 Alabama, and they'd also lose a wild 7 overtime game against Texas A&M, and that was one of the craziest games ever played. They would finish the year with a win in the Fiesta Bowl against undefeated UCF, and some media members proclaimed that 2018 was the last year that Coach O would ever do. But he did go 10-3, and, and that bowl win earned him a contract extension through 2022, and he was on pretty good terms. Another storyline from the 2018 season was that redshirt junior transfer Joe Burrow had a pretty good year, but he was not a superstar just yet. He had passed for 2,800 yards and 16 touchdowns, while also rushing for 399 yards and 7 more touchdowns. His 2,800 yards was the most since Zach Mettenberger in 2013, and they finally had some stability at the quarterback position, which they really hadn't had unless you want to count Danny Etling. LSU came into the 2019 season ranked number 6, and with Joe Burrow, Justin Jefferson, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, and Jamar Chase all back, the season had a lot of expectation. As you all know, the Tigers would go out and have a perfect season, Joe Burrow would go on to win the Heisman Trophy in his record-breaking year, and they would win the SEC Championship game, the Peach Bowl, and the National Championship, and he'd be awarded the Coach of the Year. He'd come a long way from Northwestern State 35 years ago, and he had one of, if not the best seasons a coach and a program could ever have. Despite the fairy tale season, LSU would go 5-5 five and five in 2020, and would also self-impose a bowl ban in cooperation with the NCAA. They lose eight scholarships, and they have reduced recruiting visits for the next two years. 
The self-imposed sanctions came after Odell Beckham Jr. was handing out cash to players on the field during the national championship celebration. Personally, I don't think LSU should be punished for that. I think that's Odell's problem, but it is the NCAA, so they always mess things up. Coach O's response to that was, quote, I respect the university's decision to proactively address NCAA issues from the past, and I share the disappointment of our student athletes who will not be able to compete the season in a bowl game. I'm especially proud of our players' dedication to the program during these unprecedented times in our country. Their pride in LSU will be a driving force as we continue to build a championship program. Go Tigers. Despite the bull ban, I'm sure LSU fans don't mind too much as they are still celebrating perfection. LSU has some work to do going forward, but it appears they have found their man in Coach Orgeron. Overall, I think he is a good coach, a good recruiter, and a great dude to have running the LSU program. He's made some mistakes in the past, but he's seemingly learned from them, and I think he's a good guy to have around. Yes, some of the Darius Geist stuff and the sanctions that are imposed right now aren't the best look, and his 5-5 and season in 2020 was not spectacular, but how many coaches can you say right now have won a national title in college football, and that number is very small, and despite him not having an elite record or some of the similar characteristics to other elite coaches, I do think Coach O deserves the hype that he has, and I think in a couple of years, LSU will continue to build. They have some really, they have some really fun players coming in, they are a very talented team, and people think that LSU is a cool program to play for, so I think Coach Orgeron will continue to build LSU football into a championship caliber program, and after these sanctions are over, they will be back to normal. Coach O's been through a lot, and he's the perfect guy to build this LSU program back up, and I don't think LSU football will get a better name at this point than him. I would like to see him have some more sustained success, though. What do you guys think, though? If you're an LSU fan, let me know if you think Coach O's overrated or he warrants all the hype, and if you're just a casual fan, I would love to know your thoughts as well. Let me know another coach I should look at next, and before you go, be sure to give the video a like, subscribe if you love college football, and check out all my other coaching videos here on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace and go Tigers.